Welcome back to the Good Morning Niger show. Uh, right now, we'd like to bring you that second interview that we promised. And this person is an interviewer's delight. Her name is Chichi Obunnaya. She is the project manager at WARIF. WARIF is Women at Risk International Foundation. Uh, joining us via Skype, of course, still maintaining social distance. <laughs> Good morning, Chichi, and welcome. Thank you Good for morning. joining us. <laughs> Thank you for having me here. My pleasure. My pleasure. Um, let me give a quick background of WARIF to those who might be meeting your organization for the first time. So Women at Risk International Foundation, uh, that is WARIF for short, is one of the nation's foremost NGOs tackling the prevalence of gender-based violence in Nigeria. And it has become more concerned with sensitizing rural communities around the state about the pandemic. Recognizing the need to address the issue at the grassroots level, the organization has launched the WARIF COVID-19 Response uh, in Rural Communities Initiative. This sensitization program was designed in collaboration with traditional birth attendants previously trained by WARIF as first responders on gender-based violence in the state. Good morning, Titi. Welcome again. Thank you. Good morning. Hey. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. So, um... Domestic violence has been on the rise, especially since the lockdown began, because a lot of people have been locked down literally with their perpetrators. How has WARIF been able to respond to the spike in numbers and the statistics during this period? Can you hear? Hello? Yeah. Chichi, did you hear the question? No, no, I didn't. Oh, okay, let me take that again. I said domestic abuse okay, and uh, gender-based violence has, you know, seen a spike in numbers since the lockdown begun nationwide and across the globe. So my question coming back home to Nigeria is how has WARIF been able to respond to the spike in numbers seeing as most victims have literally been locked down with their perpetrators, so literally nowhere to run? Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, you're absolutely right by stating that there's been an increase in cases of sexual and domestic violence since the lockdown. At the WARF Center, during the early stage of the lockdown, we recorded that there was an increase in the number of calls that we were getting from women and, and girls. You know, and um, about 72% of the calls that we're getting from these women and girls was cases, were cases of um, rape, mm -hmm. sexual violence, and um, also domestic violence. And um, in response to this, we had to reopen the Warrior Center because the initial instruction was that institutions needed to lock down. So we reopened um, the Warrior Center, but of course we had to run a skeletal shift where all the staff at the Warrior Center were not on ground. Um, we had the medical team coming at intervals to respond to these issues by helping survivors of rape and sexual violence. So um, we opened and in the shifts between 9 and um, 3 p.m., mm. basically assisting okay. women and girls who needed our help as an organization. Like you rightly said, our services are survivors of rape and sexual violence. Um, this includes medical treatment, psychosocial counseling, mm. and also social welfare, depending on what they need. Mm. And um, in the rural community, we, we realized that the fact that the movements were restricted, we, we decided to work with our previously trained traditional birth attendants. Mm -hmm. Because during this um, period of the COVID-19 pandemic, yeah. we realized that it, there was a daily rise in the, in the number of cases of violence against women and girls. Mm -hmm. And um, we decided to go into rural communities by launching the project called the WARIF COVID-19 Rural Response in Rural Communities, rather. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yes, so, so basically the, the initiative is ongoing at the moment. Okay, now um, looking at uh, how, um, how large or how um, populated the country is, uh, mm. we would uh, say that we have a lot of uh, ground to cover if it's uh, in respect of you know, okay. um, reaching out to people, survivors, and things. And we realized that WARIF had, uh, um, had partnerships with NGOs and other agencies, <laughs> organizations, to try and curb this uh, situation. How has that been so far? Because, like I said, <laughs> we have a very, we have a huge population and the rise of, uh, the, of, of, of this uh, abuse is rising as fast as possible. So how has the WARI been able to, you know, um, collaborate and partner with other agencies regarding? 
Okay, so for the War of COVID-19 response in rural communities, we first, our collaboration started with the traditional birth attendants. Um, okay. They are previously trained WARIF first responders to cases of gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. And um, if you recall, I know we've been on your show a couple of times to talk about the training, the first cycle of the project, and all together between the first and the second cycle, okay. we've trained 1,000 traditional birth attendants to date. Oh, wow. So what we've done is to highlight 50 of these traditional birth attendants from five local government areas in Lagos State. Okay. This local uh, Ali Mosho, mm -hmm. Ikorodu, Kosofe, and Apapa. So we selected this 50 TB traditional birth attendants from these five local government areas to help us go into the communities, create awareness about the COVID-19 pandemic, mm -hmm. the safety precautions that they can adhere to, educate the members of these communities. There is there's an increase in cases of sexual violence and abuse. Mm -hmm. uh, because you will agree with me that before now, survivors could um, take safety in their schools. Yeah. Mm, okay. You, they, they would go there. That, that was like a safe haven for them. Mm. The women in the communities would probably go to their places of work or the marketplace and not necessarily have to be home. To be home with the, uh, yeah. Hour, yeah. They with the whole, True. their abuse. That, you know, so so now that everybody's on lockdown, they are forcefully in quarantine with the abuser. Mm -hmm. So we decided to educate members of those communities to let them know that um, this these things are happening: cases of rape, mm -hmm. cases of sexual violence, cases mm -hmm. of domestic violence, and in situation where they find themselves in in being abused or they know someone in their community who's abused that they can refer them to the place like the birth center that we are opened within the spirit of the pandemic and yeah. um, we're giving services to survivors of rape and sexual So yes, um, one of our collaborators will be the traditional birth attendant. And also we, we've received support from various organizations mm -hmm. as well um, who have provided us with um, personal protective equipment from hand sanitizers to the face mask to hand gloves and, and, uh, and um, various nations to help us carry out these activities in the communities that we engage in for the first cycle of the project. Amazing. Awesome. Uh, amazing that you mentioned the PPEs because our next question was going to be, how are you ensuring the safety of your personnel at WARIF as this sensitization is going on? And basically those you consider your frontline uh, workers you know, because they are exposing oh, themselves yeah. to this, to the yeah. virus. So how are you ensuring their safety? Uh, Chi Chi, did you get that question? Oh, I think... Uh... Uh, there seems to be some network issues. But before mm -hmm. then, we should know that WARIF has a helpline that is open 24-7. So if you are in need of services at WARIF, maybe you feel you're endangered at home, at work, wherever, you feel you are potentially a victim of any form of abuse, please do not be silent. We beg you to please speak up and call the highly confidential WARIF line, which is available 24-7, any hour, at any day. Someone is on the other line willing to speak to you uh, privately and confidentially. And the number is, I'll give you that number, please take it down, 0809-0809-21-0000. Uh, That's 0809 21 Zero 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 nine. Uh, I believe we have Chi Chi back on the line. Mm -hmm. Apologies for the break in transmission. Welcome back, Chi Chi. Thank you. We can't help these things. No. We can't um, help these so, things. So, so to prevent to cross contamination between our health frontline yes. workers and yes. also we see at the center, we've um, provided them with from the gates when you meet to start with. You have um, immediately you're given a hand sanitizer. Or if mm -hmm. you want to wash your hand, what you want for is provision for that. We also give the visitor a mask, a facial mask at the gate. Um, she also checks their temperature. That's a security person to make sure that um, they are safe enough to come into the center. And upon entering the center, the medical staff that you're having to learn is fully heated, making sure that there is cross contamination between. The or we're attending to, and also the frontline work also help trying to assist the survival. 
So we have we have um, everything measures all in place here, making sure that what our workers at the work center the survivors are very really up to are safe. Okay, so let's let's talk about uh, for the survivors now because um, it's 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 a conversation that uh, is really really um, necessary as as a survivor of uh, gender based violence. What what did, when when is it right time to reach out to Warif? When when would you say is the right time for them to reach out as a survivor of uh, GBV? We say immediately. Immediately, okay. Because to start with, yes, immediately you want to store. Yes, the first procedure would be make sure you report to the nearest police station. Police station. Mm -hmm. So that is a document. Yes. Station. Make sure that you, you report the case. Talk to someone close, depending on the age of the survivor, because most of the people we see here at the work center are usually minors. Okay. Yeah, so the the minor has to be brought here by a guardian or a when well-meaning individual in the environment. So the first thing you want to do report the case and immediately bring the survivor to the war center because we've had cases where the survivor wasn't brought immediately. We advise that at least. Within 72 hours, you're supposed to bring them to the wife center so, so you can have access to different medications to prevent pregnancy, STI, sexually transmitted infections, and um, basically HIV and AIDS and some other infections that might come as a result of the abuse. Mm. So latest, 72 hours, make sure you bring the person to the wife center so that they can access the necessary care that they need. Mm. Okay, okay, okay makes sense. Yes. Okay. 70 hours latest. Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, we, we can't have this conversation without asking uh, what Warif's stand is or what Warif is doing during this period when issues of rape and all sorts of abuse and murder is ravaging the nation, Nigeria. Social media is on rampage. A lot of people are angry and people, quite frankly, were tired of hearing things like this, of things like this happening. Mm -hmm. uh, what is Warif doing? I mean, you do this every day, but it's, there seems to be a situation of emergency on ground right now. What is Warif doing to protect the women in the society? So aside the ongoing war of COVID-19 response mm -hmm. in rural communities, we're very active on social media advocacy because we know that um, almost everybody's on social media today. Yeah. The young person who's vulnerable to being abused is on social media. The mother of that child who's vulnerable to being abused is on social media. Media. So we do a lot of activities on social media, educating, you know, teaching them how they can protect themselves, yeah. ways they can speak up, encouraging survivors to let them know that there is no shame in being a survivor of rape or sexual violence. Because if we don't speak up, the silence continues and we only empower the perpetrator even further. So we do a whole lot of social media advocacy. We're very strong on social media advocacy. If you go through our social media platform, Warif underscore NG on Instagram and on Twitter and Facebook, you see all of our activities. We have our video content, we have video content out there. Basically ed educating people about this issue of rape and sexual violence and how survivors can reach out to seek for help and also speak up and report the perpetrator in any case of abuse. Uh, a quick follow-up to that. So how can we actually protect ourselves now? What are the steps? Do you have any tips? Because you hear, uh, you know, unbelievable things like, you know, what was she wearing? Why did she go there with him? Or why, what was she doing alone on the streets at night when you know where you live? You know, a lot of ridiculous things have been making the rounds. But, you know, from someone with experience who's capable to give proper directions on how to protect oneself, how can we protect ourselves? At the World Center is... If, if you can learn, and learn any um, self-defense skills, yeah, skill, if you can go yeah. for training right, to okay. learn how to defend yourself physically okay. as one, please, by all means, karate and all of that, yes, the pando. Please, if you have a means of learning, by all means, okay. go learn it. Then that's for an adult who can defend themselves. Yes. But for the, for the little child, for, child, for, child, for yeah. that minor, for that, for the, you know, it, it's, it's only on you and I to protect that child. Mm. As parents, 
make sure that at a very early age, you're educating your children, as opposed to censoring the words um, that has to be the private, private parts. Because a lot of times when we have this minor and we're asking questions, you hear, oh, uncle touch my PP. Mm. Uncle did this here. Mm. You know, so parents, please say what it is. Let this your is little girl name. know that this is my breath. Let that boy know that this is my penis. Auntie is not supposed to touch you here. Uncle is not supposed to touch you here. Mm -hmm. You know, so start early to educate those children. Then don't, don't, don't shut your children up. Okay. Because in this part of the world, I think it's an African thing. Yes. When a child at that very little age is talking, maybe making sound, you want to shut up. them up and tell her, keep quiet. Respect. Shut up, you're making noise, you're talking too much, mm -hmm. and all of that. No. Then speak, encourage your children to communicate with you, because that is the only way they will come to you first when something goes wrong. If you've educated them on how to know their body parts and, mm -hmm. and what what an individual should have in their body parts. The next, next thing you want to do is make sure that you've created an atmosphere that is comfortable, that is conducive for that to talk. So when there's a case of abuse, when there's a case of assault, the child comes to you first to say, oh, mommy, you have told me that nobody should touch my breast. Uncle touched my breast mm. today. Then, then you can act. Because a lot of these perpetrators, they don't um, immediately rape or immediately abuse that child. They, they build go through up. a process of grooming that child. And yes, they, you know, it, it's a gradual process. Mm -hmm. They groom you from saying, oh, oh, life. oh you're beautiful. Oh, come, let me take you on my, on my lap and all of those things. You know, mm -hmm. so yes. You know, it's a gradual process. You groom this child till she becomes, or he becomes comfortable with them. And eventually, when the case of abuse or situation of abuse is presented, the child doesn't struggle because they are naive. They don't even know what the person is about. Mm -hmm. hmm. So parents should foster a, a smooth relationship between themselves and their children. Have mm -hmm. conversations with them. Ask them questions. Teach them things about their body parts. Encourage them to talk to you that they, that they are free to We've had cases where the survivors was, uh, were brought by the teacher in the school or uh, a good neighbor or something in the, in the environment. And when you ask the survivor, why didn't you tell your mom or why didn't you tell you? They yeah. tell you they were scared. I'm not friends with my mom. If I told my mom, she would have screamed or yelled at me. Mm -hmm. Wow. Another thing I need to mention is parents, pay attention to your children and be uh, pay attention to the minutest of things. Exactly. Sometimes you see a child, you take her to a particular place and then um, she doesn't say hello to that uncle. Mm, that could be a sign. Or she's unnecessary or unnecessarily rude to you want to ask questions as opposed to saying why are you being rude? Don't you know who is an adult? Mm. You're supposed to be respectful to adults. You want to draw that child to yourself and ask questions. We went to visit Uncle XYZ today. Why didn't you say hello? Yeah. Why were you harsh on ABC? You know, find out, ask questions, yeah. because chances are that that uncle did something or might have done something to that child, and that's the reason he's withdrawing or he's withdrawing from that adult. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So pay attention to the minutest, to the simplest of things. This is this is quite interesting. Yeah. It's, it's it's good that uh, these these things are being talked about, and a lot of parents would see uh, a value to these uh, points you've given because Absolutely. truthfully, we're in, a, we're in a society where, like you said, you rightfully said that uh, the child is always shut down when they are having conversations. I don't talk while Absolutely. elders are talking. You can't uh, make a contribution. But these little things that we tend to neglect are usually the signs. That would have probably shown us the the, the to, to prevent the, the 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 bigger picture that mm -hmm. would happen in the future. Yeah, it's 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 a very good thing that we're having this conversation. But I'd like to ask, uh, as a Warif is, can people it's, uh, is Warif open to volunteers? Because you know, in case people would like to be part of it and say, okay, I like I I I really enjoy this. I really understand this movement. I would like to be part of it. Can I? Can people volunteer to be part of Warif? Yes, absolutely. We have um, volunteers across Lagos State and some outside Lagos State who 
are willing to work with us as an organization. Okay. So if you're interested in volunteering with WARIF, you can either visit us on our website, you see the volunteer form there where you can fill, just go to our website and search volunteer and um, you see the necessary steps to take to apply. Or you can send us a direct message on our Instagram handle, that's um, WARIF underscore NG on okay. Instagram and then um, indicate your interest to want to volunteer with WARIF and we'll take it from there. Interesting. Okay. Amazing. Thank All you right. so much, Chichi Ogbunaya, for having Thank this conversation you. with us. Thank you for your Thank time. Thank you for having us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Uh, before you go, uh, would you please give us the time schedule again of when uh, WARIF offices are open so that people know they can indeed come in these times and also the helpline, the 24-hour confidential helpline that is available to the people? Thank you. We are open between 9 to 4 p.m. for now. Before now, it was 8 to 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. So we're open between 9 and 4 p.m. And you can come in on weekends between 10 and 2 p.m. That's Saturdays. Okay. Between 10 and um, 2 p.m. Then you can call us on our confidential helpline. It's 24 hours a day. On um, 080 921 0009. I'll take it again. It's 080 921 0009. Hmm. Okay. All right, so uh, before you leave us, uh, just words of encouragement for survivors out there watching us. Uh, what are the words of encouragement you can give to them? Seeing that uh, this is a very, it's a mental um, situation usually. It's, uh, it affects the human psychology being uh, abused and, and whatnot. So what are the few words of encouragement you can give a survivor who's watching? If you are a survivor of sexual abuse, rape, or domestic violence, you need to understand that it is not your fault, mm. regardless of what you wore on that day, whether the person took you out for lunch. Because on Twitter, you see a whole lot of comments, and you're just wondering what's happening. Wow. What's going but on? I need you to understand yeah. that the issue of rape or sexual violence is never your fault as a survivor. Mm regardless of how it happened, regardless of the circumstances surrounding it's happening, understand that it is not your fault. Mm. It is absolutely shame on the perpetrator. And please, you need to speak up. You need to speak your truth. True. Because that is how your healing starts. That is when your healing starts. So speak your truth so you can take the necessary step into getting your complete healing and also encourage other survivors speak their truth. Mm. The only way we can break this cycle, this culture of silence, is to make sure that survivors begin to speak up, feel comfortable, feel confident enough to speak their truth, mm -hmm. and also encourage another young girl or another young woman to speak our truth as well. Mm -hmm. Know that you're not alone. There are organizations like the WARF Center open to, to assist you, open to support you. And you need to understand our services are completely free of charge. So you're not thinking you about paying anything. Mm. The psychosocial counseling you get, the legal support you get, the medical treatment you get, they are totally free of charge. You're not paying anything. Mm. Amazing. So know that you're not alone. Warif is here to help you. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much thank for you. this conversation. Absolutely. It was very, very timely looking at the current situation of the world and in the country at large. Mm -hmm. uh, it's good that we had this conversation. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, Chichi. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. You're welcome.